Okay, sorry, I hit stop by accident, so I guess we're going to have a three-part video today. My fault. So here's what I want you to do on number three. Lay out your graph, and let's see if we can figure out our amplitude and our period. And see if you can't get the labeling correct on this. Press pause on the video, because when I come back, I'm going to already have it labeled in an effort to save some time here. Okay, here's what I got. The amplitude is 3, so I can label my y-axis, max of 3, min of negative 3. Period, 2 pi divided by 3 over 2 is 4 thirds pi, so that's where I'm going to stop. Half of that is 2 pi over 3, half of 2 over 3 is 1 over 3. What's in the middle of 2 thirds and 4 thirds? 3 thirds, which is pi. Now that establishes our window. So now we know our window for this graph is right there. Now we just simply put our five points for a positive sine curve in there. What, is, what are those? Well, it starts at the intercept, up to a max, intercept, min, intercept. Bingo, there we go. Okay. Now our domain, again, negative infinity to infinity. The range of this one goes from negative 3 to positive 3. And I think that's it for this graph, okay? So let's do the same thing on the next graph. Let's test ourselves a little bit here. Let's go ahead and lay out our blank graph. And let's figure the amp what the amplitude is and what the period is. And let's get our graph, or our, our graph labeled. And then come pause the video and then come back. Okay, so what do we have happening here? We have an amplitude, it says negative 4 there, but our amplitude we would say is 4, and the negative is going to invert the graph. That's going to come into play when we put our dots in. Okay, not when we lay out our net positive 4 for our max and our negative 4 for our min. Okay, not until we put our dots in there, our 5 points will that come into play. The period would be 2 pi divided by this 2 thirds, which is 6 pi over 2 or 3 pi. So we're going to be finished when we hit the 3 pi. What's halfway in between 0 and 3 pi? Half, or 1 and a half, or 3 pi over 2. What's halfway in between 0 and 1 and a half? 3 fourths. And what's halfway in between 3 halves and, th and 3? It's 9 pi over 4. Remember, you can add these two together to get that third mark. Okay, so we have established then our window to lay out our five points. And what happens with a cosine curve? Well, usually it starts up here at the max and goes down. Looks like that. But if we invert that, then it's got to start at the minimum and go up. It's got to look like that. So all we do here, because that negative 4 is start at the minimum, to the intercept, to the max, intercept, minimum, bingo, there we go. Okay. Now again, I'm going to point out one thing for a basic cosine curve. Again, that has a period of 2 pi. Our B value here was 2 thirds, which is less than 1. So it kind of acts opposite of what you think it was. Remember a second ago, we had a B value of 4. We had 4x. That made things happen 4 times faster because it was bigger than 1. 2 thirds is less than 1, so that stretched this out to 3 pi. So that's why we fit our window all the way out to 3 pi instead of the normal 2 pi. Okay. Last thing we're going to look at is writing the equation of a graph. And I'm just going to stay here. We're not going to pause it. We'll just do this one together. And how will we, if we have the equation, how would we determine, or excuse me, if we have the graph, how would we determine the equation? Well, remember this is a interesting thing to recognize and that is the height and depth of our waves and what else is an interesting thing how long does it take for the ride to last okay so those are two important points to pay attention to on your graph now maybe the first thing we got to figure out is which one are we talking about here you know, is it a sine or a cosine how would we figure that out well look at where it starts it starts at an intercept which one of these start at an intercept? A sine. So this is a sine curve. 
Now normally a sine curve starts at the intercept and goes up. This one goes down. Okay, so what's that tell us? Well, it's inverted. What's that mean? We have a negative A value. Alright. Well, what is that A value? Let's just go ahead and find it. Well, our A value is what's the height of our wave and the depth of our wave? Our A value is 3. So that means we're going to have a negative 3 for an A value in front of our sine. Now, what about the period? Well, the period is calculated, or the new period, is calculated by taking the old period divided by B. So what do we know about our new period? Well, it's 6 pi. What was the old period? Well, for our sine and cosine, the old period is 2 pi, or the original period. Shouldn't have used old. Should have said original. Divided by B. And then you can put that over top of 1 and cross multiply, and you get B to be 1 third. So that means we have negative 3 times the sine of 1 third X would have been our equation. Okay, and a couple of these on your homework, and that's kind of how you'll, you'll attack it. Figure out which one you're doing, look at where it starts at. Remember, sine starts at the intercept, cosine starts at a max. If it's an inverted cosine, it'll start at a minimum, but it will not start at an intercept. That's how you can tell the sine curve. Then figure out your A value, look at the height and depth of your wave, and then you'll do this little formula, little work right here to calculate your B value that goes in here. And again, that's always what your new period is. Where does this graph stop at? And then it's always for sine and cosine equal to 2 pi over B. For tangent, that will change. All right, sorry about the starting and stopping of the video. Mr. C hit the stop button instead of the pause button. I am not a videographer or whatever that would be called by any means, but uh, hope this helps. Uh, Mr. Patterson's class, I hope that helped. this helps you. You don't, see, don't have to see him every day, but anyway, direct any questions you have on anything. Any, if you need any extra help, direct those to me or Mr. Patterson in the email. We'll see you.